From downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Very few of us saw the rain tonight. The drops are moving out, but tomorrow's rain could be a repeat of Sunday. Kissing in class, a teacher arrested for inappropriate behavior. What he promised to give students for a smooch. But first, a disturbing delivery. Shocking video from a local grocery store has the health department responding tonight. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 11. The video and pictures made their rounds online. It didn't take long for people to start asking a lot of questions. The delivery was being made to the Warren Food Market on 10 Mile near Ryan. Coco McAvoy is live tonight. And those questions could be answered soon, Coco. Yes, Karen and Devin, this is not something you see every day, nor do you want to see anything like this. And the wholesaler delivering the meat says the box carrying the meat broke so that they, they say they had to use the cart. But the woman who took the photos and people all over social media say it's gross. That is disgusting. Like that's unsanitary. The woman who took the photos doesn't want to be identified, but her post is now viral. All because of these photos showing a man loading 200 pounds of raw beef into a shopping cart to deliver to the Warren Food Market on East 10 Mile Road. For you to put it in a shopping cart and no telling how it was hot earlier. Employees of the store say they saw the man load the beef into the cart and the $800 worth of beef is now in their freezer. But he brought this meat into the store. Yeah. But this isn't concerning to you. No, I have no concern about this. When the questions got a little tougher, we were directed to speak to the wholesaler, Nazim Saad Halal Meat. Nazim Saad says they used the cart because the two boxes carrying the meat broke. See, when they lifted the meat coming out. He says he saw the photos being taken today. Oh, and I think, and I see it is a big deal, and you know. But officials say the big deal is the fact that this is unsanitary and not at all a proper food handling method. People on social media seem to agree. I don't wish anyone gets shut down, but I wish they practice better sanitary practices because that's not, I don't believe it's sanitary in my, in my opinion. And the woman who took the photos says she was at the laundromat next door. She saw what was happening and people in the area say this happens all the time. So she says she felt compelled to take those pictures to make sure the public is aware. Back to you. Well, Coco, what's, what does the health department do from here up now? Yes, so I spoke to an official with, from the health department, and he says they have immediately contacted the Department of Agriculture because the Department of Agriculture is the one who handles inspections for yeah. grocery stores, and he says they'll be following up immediately tomorrow. That's why you see that USDA stamp on the meat. All right, Coco. Karen? We're learning more about the suspect in last night's concert bombing in Manchester, England. ISIS is claiming that one of its soldiers carried out that suicide bombing. Jay Gray has more from Manchester. 24 hours later, Manchester is mourning. I don't think it's really sunk in. Shocked. Um, it's very close to home. A home torn apart by the blast that killed 22 and wounded 59. Carried out, police say, by 22-year-old Solomon Abedi, who we now know was born and raised in the city he attacked. NBC News has learned a Betty, whose family is from Libya, received training abroad by a terrorist organization, though his allegiance isn't clear. Police have arrested his brother and have not ruled out the possibility that he had help carrying out the deadly attack. Leading Prime Minister Theresa May to announce the terror threat in Britain has been raised to critical, its highest level. This means that their assessment is not only that an attack remains highly likely, but that a further attack may be imminent. As the search for evidence and answers continues here, the world is standing with Manchester tonight. The Eiffel Tower, the Roman Colosseum, an Empire State Building, all dark, a tribute to the fallen. As we stand in solidarity... And While at Yankee Stadium, a moment of, of silence Kingdom is followed by God Save the Queen. Back in Manchester... Manchester stands together and we stand strong and nothing's gonna stop that, ever. United in their determination, resolve, and a promise to honor those lost. Jay Gray, Local 4. Well, our stretch of nice weather will continue for part of tomorrow.
part of tomorrow, part the of operative the phrase. Then the umbrellas are back, right, Ben? Oh, there's always a butt in there somewhere. But yes, we will be seeing showers returning in quite a, a noticeable fashion. Tonight, though, what's left of the stuff that rolled through in the afternoon and evening is up towards the thumb. That's on its way out. Look at these totals that we're expecting starting in the afternoon tomorrow and stretching through Wednesday night. This is by 7 a.m. on Thursday. There'll be parts of the area that pick up an inch of rain, and there's still more to go. We'll still top off uh, that with more showers on Thursday as we get through the afternoon and evening hours. So about half the area could be seeing one inch plus as far as rainfall totals go. Very similar to what we picked up on Sunday. Temperatures in the morning though in the mid 50s and again it's going to be a dry start and then we start bringing in the rain. We'll talk more on timing and look at your Memorial Day weekend forecast coming up. Ben. The Detroit mother charged in connection with a crash that killed her six month old son is being held on a two million dollar bond. Investigators say Latoya Powell's was driving under the influence last week when another driver hit her minivan, causing it to flip. Three of Powell's young children were thrown from the, from the minivan. Her infant son was killed. Police say none of the children was properly restrained in the van. In addition to OWI, Powell's is charged with manslaughter and child abuse. A downriver mother doing a task no one should have to endure, planning a funeral not just for her mother, but for her 10-year-old son. Christopher Balzer and Sherry Moltop were shot to death last night in Woodhaven. Police say the killer was Sherry's 62-year-old boyfriend. Wendy Moltop says she was walking to the apartment when she heard the shots. I heard the gunshots go off. I ran to him and tried to save him. I couldn't save him. It was already too late. Why you did this to him? You could have just let him go. The boyfriend, whose name is not being released, took his own life when police arrived. Moltop says he and her mother argued, but she never imagined he was capable of this. The search is on for the crew that pulled off two carjackings in less than an hour overnight in Detroit. First happened at 3:15 this morning at East McNichols and John R. The second. Uh, not very, very shortly after 350 in the morning, West McNichols and Oak Drive. In both cases, the victim's car was bumped from behind when they got out to check the damage. The robbers pulled a gun and took their car. Police are looking for two men and a woman. In both cases, they were driving a blue Subaru Forester. Fiat Chrysler says it will defend itself vigorously against claims it cheated emissions tests. The Justice Department filed a civil suit against the automaker today, accusing FCA of using software to beat emission testing. According to the suit, defeat devices were installed in Ram pickups and Jeep Grand Cherokees with diesel engines. The feds are calling for a $4.6 billion fine. He is armed with a brick and up to no good. Livonia police hope that this surveillance video will help them catch a burglar they believe is behind a pair of business break-ins. Video shows him breaking the glass on the front door of a liquor store and then rummaging through the building. The same guy is believed to have hit a nearby gas station. If you recognize him from the video, give police a call. It's called the totally clean coin laundry, but it's dealing with a dirty message tonight. Surveillance video from the Bay City business shows kids carving inappropriate images into the freshly poured cement in the parking lot. Vandalism cost the business about 4,200 bucks. The two young boys were caught. The company is planning to press charges. They're going from high school to serving our country. Yeah, tonight high school seniors from across Metro Detroit were honored in a special tribute in Gross Point Farms. The Gross Point War Memorial hosting this event for students from Wayne, Macomb, and Oakland counties. These teens have all listed in the armed forces and they will begin training right after graduation. And our thanks and congratulations to every one of them. A terrifying ride for a truck driver when he loses control of his semi. Why the only way to stop was to crash. Also a classroom controversy, a teacher arrested for what he's caught on camera doing with students in exchange for candy. First, a candid conversation with Matthew and Kelly Stafford. The moment the first baby cried was probably one of the most emotional moments in my life and I think is, well, it's his. How has life changed for the new parents of twins? You'll find out coming up next. What's your time? Playing quarterback for the Detroit Lions will teach you a lot of things, oh, yes. but there is no playbook for raising twin girls. I looked for one once. And <laughs> it doesn't exist, much, does it? No. The offseason has been really busy for these new parents, Matthew and Kelly Stafford. Tonight, Bertie Smilovitz has a rare glimpse inside the home of the Lions starting QB. 
The rebirth of downtown Detroit has been generated through many avenues, but sports has played a vital role. With Little Caesars Arena nearing completion, the Red Wings and Pistons are about to make a new home. That means all four pro sports will be neighbors. As for the Lions, well, they've been downtown since 2002, and Matthew Stafford's been their leader since 2009. Earlier this week, Stafford and his wife Kelly welcomed us into their home to talk about the birth of their twin daughters. Kelly starts things off by talking about what the moment was like. The first thing that went through my mind was, is, are they, is she okay, the first one that came out? Because with twins, obviously, you never know. Um, with There's a lot of, I guess, risk and stuff with twins. So that was the first. When you hear them cry, you expect them to be fine. Um, but that's what's going through my mind the minute they came out. Did you cry? Did you like? Yeah, like uh, I was telling her it was weird because it was. <laughs> I was like, like a laughing, cry laugh. laughing like joyful and crying at the same time. Right. It's kind of a weird feeling to have. It's you know, it's unique. Um, have you ever seen them like that in any no. other? Not, not a big crier. So. No, that's what I figured. You're emotionally, you, you're sort of. Yeah. Very quiet, reserved. You kind of are for sure who you <laughs> From are. What I could see. Yeah. <laughs> Forget there was somebody else in the room. Yeah, right. <laughs> Poor thing. Uh. Quick disclaimer: We were at the Stafford's home for over two hours, and both babies slept peacefully without a sound. As you know, no one in their right mind wakes a sleeping baby, especially when it's twins. That's the first piece of advice. Here's the second. Accept help. Accept help. I mean, yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. like. Families in town, whatever, yeah. For and sure, they want to take the babies for a little bit, give them to them. You gotta have, you know, a lot of patience. And I have never been that way. She's been great, but it's, you find a new new realm of, of patience. And, and uh, you know, especially with two for us, I and mean, we're both pretty much always going. So, um, I don't know, your life changes, but it's a, it's a good way. But how, how do you gain more patience? I, I mean, I think you just kind of have to. You just you know, have no choice. Yeah, right? you know, so, and just kind of accepting that rather than fighting it, you know? Stafford airing it out. Stafford's role in life is to try and help the Lions get to and win a Super Bowl. And he's got another role which his wife says he's quite good at and in ways you might not even think of. All right, how's the diaper situation? How's he? He's really good. And it's really funny because whichever one he has tends to poop. <laughs> I promise. Like it is it's really funny. Like we switch Calming off days. Influence. One Calming day influence. one day he'll have Sawyer and then yeah. So the day he has Sawyer she tends to poop a lot and then we'll switch the next day and he'll have Chandler and then I don't yeah. know what it is. Something about his touch, you know. Oh, just I makes don't know. Want to go like two. Mr. Metamucil here or something, <laughs> right? There's yeah. a deal out there somewhere, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now beside the Staffords, the future Justin Abdicators will be along, as will James McCann and his wife Jessica, plus Stan Van Gundy of the Pistons. He talks about the team's move down I-75. That's Detroit All In, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, right here on Local 4. Devin Karen, back to you. All right, Pern. What's with both of them sleeping for two straight hours? That doesn't I said it happen doesn't happen all the time, but they had good no. timing, that's for sure. It worked out pretty good. Uh, by the way, also in tomorrow night's show, uh, Kelly will reveal some pretty personal details about their struggles getting pregnant, so make sure you tune in. Which a lot of women and yep. men can deal with yep. and understand. Well, now here is a look at what I'm working on for tomorrow night. It's been nearly six months since Danielle Stizlicki disappeared. You cannot just vanish off the face of the earth. Now Danielle's parents open up about what they're doing to get through this. The only way that I can pay them back is to try and find solutions to reduce this. It also brings me peace in the morning as I drive that hour and a half to work, that she's with me. The Stizlickies, the search for answers and justice continues. Our candid conversation tomorrow at 11. Ben's turn now. He has spent a busy day in Warren. Uh, you gave away. It went, you ran out of went through a weather ton. Yeah, radios we, we at one point. Today. We did with the uh, the portable ones, the, and yeah, then we yeah. somehow yeah. found some more. Yeah. I felt like I was selling in the cars. trunk of your car. Yeah. You get one, you can get two <laughs> over here. Time only. Uh, but we really did uh, guess, get a lot of people uh, yeah. prepared for severe weather season, and thank goodness we don't have any uh, in the forecast in the next seven days. Uh, the good thing that we have are temperatures. We have been pretty close to average in this time of year. Uh, room temperature is the normal. 72 is what we usually see this time of year. 
here. We got up 73 in the afternoon. Did see a little bit of an, a warmer than average start at 57 this morning. And of course, those records nowhere near and probably not going to be close to them as we get through the next seven days. Moderation is the key as far as temperatures go. We're in the 50s in most spots, still hanging on to the 60s here on the east side. But when you see the picture, as far as the radar goes, it's this low that's driving everything. And that upper low is hanging out there in Iowa. And until it gets on the other side of us, it is just going to be sucking up moisture out of the Gulf and putting it down right here in the Great Lakes. So we'll start out dry tomorrow, but uh, when we get into the afternoon hours, you'll see here about three o'clock. Those showers start returning here, especially in our south and west zones and notice overnight. That's when we see most of that rain start pushing in and it will start to add up Thursday. We'll see more rain finally drying out on Friday and looks like we'll stay that way until we get into the holiday weekend. Unfortunately, 56 tonight for the overnight low with mostly cloudy skies. We did pretty good with highs today. Let's see where tomorrow's go in our four zone forecast. Metro highs tomorrow, low 70s pretty much. We'll see some upper 60s, maybe even mid 60s there in Clinton Township. South zone temperatures will be in the 70s tomorrow. Uh, well, I should say upper 60s, close to 70 there in the south zone. One of the first spots it's going to be seeing those showers. Upper 60s also here in our west zone and once you get north of uh, M59, uh, mostly 60s, maybe even a 50 here, 59 in Lexington for high temperatures tomorrow. So we will be cooler Thursday clouds around and also chances of showers there. But again, most of that rain is going to be coming Wednesday night into Thursday. We'll start out the weekend, the three day weekend dry. But once we get into Saturday, chances of showers there also on Sunday and Monday. The important thing to look at is that neither of those. Well, I should say none of those three days are going to be a washout, but there's going to be chances of rain each of those three days, so it's going to be really tough to be planning outdoor activities. Yeah, if you had Thanks to pick a best of Saturday, Sunday, Monday. If you just had to, I'd say Saturday. All right, that helps me Great. a little our bit. Pic our picnic is <laughs> you're going to hold on to it, right? <laughs> nice. Okay. Helps me a little bit. All right. Thanks, Ben. Well, it's one of the greatest honors for Olympic athletes, but there's a problem with their most coveted prize. Why some winners are complaining about their medals. Yeah. Also, a blatant and illegal abuse of power. The stunning reason a teacher forced a 10 year old student to kiss him in the classroom. Coming up tomorrow on Local 4 News Today, all the big breaking stories from overnight. Plus, it's Wellness Wednesday. What's your child's TMI? No, it doesn't stand for too much information. I'm Dr. Frank Nick George. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., I'll show you why this new measure could offer a better snapshot of your child's health. Plus, get weather and traffic always on the fours. Detroit mornings start here from 4.30 to 7 a.m. See you when you wake up.